Why, hello again, everybody, and welcome once again to the Independence Public Library's Science Time. As always, I am part-time scientist, Mr. Alex, and today we are going to utilize the power of physics to create masterpieces. Masterpieces like this. Or like this. Or like the beautiful one that you can see right over here. Now if you notice something about these masterpieces, they're all spirals, circles, around a given point. Swirling, swirling all the way around. And the way that we're going to create these is by creating a spinning top that we will use to paint with. Now, if you're familiar with spinning tops, they're those little, almost acorn-shaped little toys that you grab from the top and have a big disc around, and you give it a spin, and it'll keep going. We're going to make one of those, and we're going to put paint on the edges of it so that the force of spinning the top will splatter the paint around and create these beautiful spirals around the center where we spin from. In order to do this, we're going to need a disc of some sort, either a blank one or possibly an old movie that's too scratched up to work or something else like that. We're going to need a pen or pencil or marker that we're going to put through the center hole that we're going to use to spin it with. The thicker the better as long as it fits through the hole and we're going to attach those together and hold it in place with rubber bands. Lastly, we're going to need tape and four of some kind of coin. Make sure they're all the, uh, the same so they'll have about the same weight that we can use to make the disc a bit heavier so it'll spin faster or spin longer. But once you've got all those materials, we're ready to get to work and we're ready to create our spinning top so that we can eventually create these spiral masterpieces. So let's get started, Ben. Okay, now that we've got our materials all ready, that being our disc, either blank or broken or not usable for some reason, just a nice CD or DVD, our marker or pencil or pen, depending on what you've got, the thicker the better as long as it fits through the hole on our disc, some tape, and our rubber band to hold everything together. Now, as you might have noticed, I've already attached onto the back of our disc right here four coins. They're all the same coin, they're all quarters. And that's important, they're all the same, which means that it's gonna give it an even spin, so it's got an even weight distribution all the way around, one for each corner. And the reason that we wanna add weight to our disc right here is because the more weight something has, the more inertia it has, or rather, the more mass it has, the more inertia it has. And inertia is basically the property in physics where the more mass something has, the harder it is to get started moving and the harder it is to get stopped when moving. If you've ever, uh, if you've ever decided to ride a bike while wearing a really heavy backpack, you might find it very hard to start pedaling, but at the same time, it might also take longer to break. That's because of inertia. If you take that really heavy backpack off, suddenly it's easier to pedal your bike, and at the same time, it's easier to stop your bike. And so that's what we're doing here. More weight means that this is gonna spin for longer. Okay, so like I said, we've got our disc with even weight distribution of our coins. And we've got our marker right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the marker in so that we can spin it like a top. And the way that we're going to attach it to our disc is we're going to take our rubber bands and we're going to attach them on the top and bottom to hold it in place. You want the disc to be about this far from the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start attaching the rubber bands. So you're going to wrap it around once. You're going to, oop, maybe I should start it with a bit further away and I'll push it up. So you're going to start it, just wrap the rubber band around. And just keep going, keep wrapping the rubber band on there, push it down to the bottom. And then we'll switch sides, holding the disc in the same spot. We're going to do the same thing, but now on the top rather than the bottom. Go over it with the rubber band so that we can hold 
our disc in place. And try all the while to keep the disc, you know, when standing up like this, parallel to where the floor is. So that when you set it down, the disc will be flat and not sloped one way or the other. And that's what I do. I take one side rubber banded all the way, then I flip it and I do the other side. And it'll take a few rubber bands to get it, you know, nice and firm in the, posi in the position that you want. So just keep at it. Okay, there we go. As you can see, took quite a few rubber bands, but we got it on there eventually. And now it spins very, very, very nicely. Nice, stable, not wobbling too much one way or the other. It's basically flat, parallel to the ground. Nice and firm. That's exactly what we want. And because we've got the coins weighted on there, like we said, it increased the inertia of our spinning top so it'll spin for longer and stay more consistent. That's great for when we're going to be painting later. So yeah, give it some time. If it's a bit wobbly, don't be afraid to add a few more rubber bands and then really push them together to make sure it's good. And like I said, you want the disc to be about this close to the bottom, maybe a bit closer to the bottom. And give it a spin. Okay. But now that we've got our functional spinning top and you've made sure that it spins very, very nicely, Let's take our newly made creation and let's go paint with it. Okay, now that we've got our finished spinner, we are going to make a masterpiece. So we're going to have our piece of paper laid out like this, all nice. Make sure that you've got the area that you're gonna be spinning covered underneath the paper because very likely the paint is gonna go off. I've got newspapers covering the entire table. Outside of that, I'm also making sure that I am wearing something right now that I can get covered in paint. Because like I said, it could go everywhere. And what we're gonna do is take this right here and we're going to put our paint on top of it. A little bit of green, I think. A little bit of white. And finally, a wee little bit of blue. We're gonna set that right there in the middle. And you can make the designs by just spinning it freehand like that. Look at that go. Or letting it go. Get a good grip, spin it. And that's the beginning, that's our artwork. And if you want, you can reapply the paint or add different colors and keep going. I'm gonna stick with these colors for now. And you can also put it on a different side to make new spirals. Voila. Your masterpiece is complete. Congratulations, everyone. With that, you have just created your very own spiral masterpiece. And as you can see right here, I gave it time to dry after spinning it. Luckily, this one, the paint was very thin all the way around because I didn't use two big um, globs of paint. It was lightly spread, so this didn't take very long at all to dry. Depending on how much paint you use and how thick it gets on the paper, it might take a while. But this one dried relatively quickly, just a couple of hours. And with that, you have your very own spiral masterpiece, just like this. Feel free to play around with different sizes of paper, uh, different colors of paint, different thicknesses of paint. Maybe a little bit more one color than the other when you give it a spin. Give it a spin. <laughs> 
But yeah, that's the, that's the spinning spiral power of our spiral tops right here. Even by themselves, they're still really cool. I love these. But the fact that you can make beautiful artwork like this, that looks like it belongs in a museum, honestly, I think that's just icing on the cake. So thank you once again for joining me for this science time. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, we're about to approach the end of summer reading, so be sure if you've signed up for summer reading that you get your summer reading tickets and packets in before August 14th to make sure that you're eligible to win any of the raffle drawings. Once again, take care everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>